One of the problems we have with the development of conservation farming systems in Australia is that we've ended up with a bit of contradictory advice. On one hand, we're all encouraging the use of minimum or zero tillage. On the other hand, you look at any website and we'll tell you that in the use of limestone, you've really got to incorporate it into the soil. If you have a problem with herbicide resistant weeds, one of the solutions, including with the double knock, is that the second knock might be tillage. Uh, we're also telling you that tillage is useful for overcoming rhizoctonia, for slugs and snails coming out of a pasture phase into a canola phase. So there's a whole lot of reasons why some form of tillage can often make sense. So how does a farmer reconcile a zero till system with the need to till the soil to handle specific issues? So the point of our project is if we have to impose a tillage on our soil in a no-till situation, how much damage does it do to soil structure, to soil chemistry, to soil biology? And if it does damage, how long does it take the soil to recover from that damage? And then how often might we need to till in our no-till systems? Is it really minimum tillage rather than zero tillage? These are the sorts of questions we're currently addressing with GRDC funded projects both in the southern and northern grains regions. One of the problems that we've seen in no-till systems is that some nutrients tend to be stratified within the surface soil. Uh, phosphorus in particular, uh, not much in the case of carbon and nitrogen in general, but phosphorus and to a large extent pH tend to be strongly stratified. Now what we mean by stratified is there's a big gradient from high to low as you go from the top few millimetres down to about 10 to 15 centimetres depth. And so a soil core, which you take a standard soil sample to say 10 centimetres depth, is giving you an average of that 10 centimetre layer. But the seed is being placed somewhere between 2 and 5 centimetres, depending on whether it's canola or a large grain or a legume seed, or I'm sorry, a pulse seed. And so the emerging seminal roots don't necessarily see what the soil test is seeing. And that's creating a few headaches for people like me who are trying to give adequate advice to growers on the appropriate rates of things like phosphorus fertilizer. It could be that the soil tests that we have that were developed mainly in the era of conventional tillage aren't all that accurate in a no-till situation. Within about three or four years we hope to give people some robust answers on the impact of zero tillage and stratification of nutrients on how to interpret soil tests.